Okay, here's a fun question that ties into what you might already know about the angle sums of interior angles, of regular polygons, excuse me. So let's just read the question. We'll talk about the background and then make that jump here that we need to solve this problem. So the problem says that the measure of each interior angle of a regular polygon is 156 degrees. How many sides does this polygon have? Well, what's a regular polygon? A regular polygon is the shape where each edge is the exact same length and the shape is closed. So, um, for example, a triangle is a regular polygon with one, two, three sides. And if each side is exactly the same, it's an equilateral triangle, which means each angle is 60 degrees, right? 60 all around. And another regular polygon, of course, is a square. Now, a square has four sides, and how many degrees on the inside? Well, if each angle is 90 degrees, the total angle sum is 360. So we start to see, uh, as we build these up, we can do the pentagon next, although I'll probably botch this up. One, two, three, four, five. Sorry about that. I assume my pentagon has each side of exact equal length. So I'll try to fix it a little bit. This. A little bit better should have used a different program with a pentagon tool, but whatever. So each angle here now adds up, adds up to what? And what is, the, what is each angle? Well, they're all the same again. And the total angle sum is 540. We started with a triangle with 180, then we had a square with 360, and now we have a total angle sum of 540. And just to keep track, what does each angle what is each angle here? Well, 540 divided by the five sides here. And that kind of gives you the clue as to what's happening. So that's how many degrees? Well, I start with 500 divided by 5. It's 100 degrees. And 40 divided by 5 is 8. So each angle now is 108 degrees. So there's this nice connection here. Um, so, okay. So notice right away, in the triangle, we take... 180, if we divide it by 60, what happens? Well, we get 3, the number of sides. Here, if we take 360 and we divide it by 90, what do we get? We get 4, the number of sides. Here, we take 540 and we divide it by 108, what do we get? We get 5, the number of sides. So, we're trying to find the number of sides here. We know that the, um, that we know that each, right, each angle measures to 156 degrees. So how many sides are there? Well, this is where things get tricky because, well, we don't know the total angles sum of this regular polygon. We're missing this piece. So let's just backtrack for a second. Um, and this is, I think, a, a formula you often see maybe in sixth or seventh grade. Um, we look at the number of sides of a regular polygon and the total angle measure of that polygon. Right, so we know so far, if you have a triangle, right, we just established that three sides, you have 180 degrees. If you have four sides, you have 360. If you have five sides, you have 540. And can you anticipate what happens with six sides? Well, each time we're going up by 180, right? So now the next would be 720, right? A six sided polygon would have 720 degrees. So often we're looking for the formula that predicts if you're given n number of sides, any number of sides, what's the total angle measure? Well, we can think of this rate of increase, this proportional increase, as a slope, 180. So each time we're going up by 180. And the first time we plug in n, the number of sides, is 3, we should get 180. So the question I often ask myself is how do I have a formula where I have 3 sides and that gives me the number 180? Well, I think to myself, well, if I took 3, the number of sides, n, and I just took 2 away, that would give me the number 1. And I know 1 times 180 is 180. And that's my way of deducing this formula. This works in each case. Right? 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 times 180 gives you the total angle sum of 180, and it keeps working. 4 minus 2 is 2, times 180 gives you the number of angles in a, the total angle sum, excuse me, in a square, and so forth. So this formula is typically where we stop this investigation. But this question asks us to go a little bit further. And what does this mean? Well, if I take n minus 2 times 180, what does that equal? Well, that equals the total angle in measure in a shape. So I'll call that t. If 
But now we need to go back to our initial investigation. What do we do here? Right? What do we do in each of these equations right here? It looks like to me what we did in every scenario is the same. We started on top with 180, 360, or 540. That is what? What's T? The total angle sum. So we took the total angle sum, and what do we divide it by? Well, we divided it by um, 60 and 90 and 108. We divided it by the measure of each side. But what you might also notice is if I took 180 and I divided it by 3, what would I get? Well, I'd get 60. I can kind of reverse this formula around. In other words, in a regular polygon, if I take the total angle sum t and I divide it by the number of sides, I get the angle measure of each side. Right? In this next one, 360, if I took 360 divided by 4, I would get 90. How many degrees there are in each angle? In the next one, if I took 540 and divided by 5, I would get 108, the value of, of each angle. So here I can take my total angle sum t and divide it by the number of sides, n. Right? Going back, 180 divided by 3. There were three sides, n is 3. 360 divided by 4. There, n is 4, four sides. And then 540 divided by 5. There are five sides. And what does this always give me? Well, this gives me the degrees measure of each angle. So I'll call that D, the degree measure of each angle. But how can we solve this? Well, didn't we just say that T is equal to N minus 2 times 180? So couldn't I substitute that into our formula and get this? I get N minus 2 times 180 divided by N. And, and maybe you're thinking, well, it doesn't really help us. Yes, it does, because we're also told the value of D. We're told the degree measure of each angle. It's this number right here, 156. So now all we have to do is solve this equation. n minus 2 times 180 over n equals 156. So I, I know we did a lot of background right there, but now all we have to do is solve this algebraic expression. How do we do that? Well, let me clear off some of this. Make room here. Uh, clear it off right here. Okay. And clear this off and then move our equation. Okay. So the first thing I might do to solve this equation is multiply everything by n. And this will make my life a lot easier. On the left hand side of the equation, we're dividing by n. So multiplying by n and dividing by n, it, that process cancels out. But on the right side, we now have 156 n. On the left hand side, n minus 2 times 180. All I did was multiply everything, each side of the equation by n. Now I distribute 180. So I get 180n minus 360, right? 180 times n is 180n minus 2 times 180. So that was where the minus 360 came from. Equals 156n. Now what I'm going to do is subtract 156 and add 360 to both sides. So we add 360 and we subtract 156 n okay now what does that give us well this cancels out and this cancels out up here we have what's 180 n minus 156 n well what's 180 minus 156 that's 24 right so we get 24 n equals 360 and believe it or not we're almost done now we just divide both sides by 24 and n equals 360 divided by 24. What's that? Well, I, I, I usually solve these, and I'm, <laughs> maybe this is not something I'm proud of, but I like to solve these things by guessing. Right? 24 times 10 is 240, so I know it's, so I'm trying to find n here, so I know the answer is above 10. And we need how many more? We need 60 and another 60, which is 120. We need a hundred, another 120. Uh, to reach 360, and that's five more 24s, which gives me 15 as our answer. So here the answer is, right, 15. Notice in this process we never even had to find the actual total angle measure of this polygon, which is why I love this problem so much. Is a way to look back at our formula for uh, the interior angle sums to f and the total angle measure to figure out just by given the fact that you have. Um, a regular polygon, and you know the measure of each angle, you can tell how many sides there must be. Alright, hope this helped.